All right. Uh, the next one is uh, case 11, which is an 80-year-old male with a pink craterform papule on the nose. And uh, the clinical impression was squamous cell carcinoma. And I, I wish I had the photo handy, but I saw it at the time. And let me tell you, this tumor looked like a squamous cell or a basal clinically. It was pink. It had a crater in the middle, a little bit of scale on top. Um, I was shocked when I saw the path and then I saw the clinical. Not at all what I expected the clinical to be. So uh, I hopefully you find this instructive. So this is a, a dense nodular proliferation, sheet-like proliferation of very dark blue to purple cells filling the dermis in an old sun-damaged individual on the face. And we've got ulcers, some serum crust on the top, dilated follicle with, uh, with keratin in it, which I think may have imparted that cray terraform appearance, given the false impression of what looked like a squamous cell carcinoma clinically, but turned out um, not to be. And I want you to pay attention here for a second, just to add a little, a little extra terror to your day and give you something to have bad dreams about. This is the stuff nightmares are made of because we have very ugly epithelioid cells with, with uh, very atypical nuclei, uh, filling the dermis kind of in sheet-like configuration with some areas having kind of almost a nested look, all right? And if you did a keratin here, I think this case had some weak focal keratin expression. Um, and uh, um, SOX10 was done because right away, I think, uh, I would think of melanoma in a case like this. I would think of poorly differentiated carcinoma. And I would think of one other thing, which is what this ended up being. And hopefully you thought of that too. I will come back and show you more morphology in a minute. But I just want to show you how if you have a biopsy, a shave, or that's shallow or a partial biopsy from an area that's solid like this, you can really get burned and miss the diagnosis. Especially in cases where there's strong keratin expression, you can miss diagnosis as poorly differentiated carcinoma. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna open up the immunostains. I believe this was the CD34. And it's pretty much, once it comes into focus here, I mean, practically negative in most of the tumor. And that's why I included it, so you can see the background vessels are, sorry, I think I've overtaxed my computer again. There we go. Background vessels are positive, tumor cells negative. For the most part, there are some focal areas where we get some kind of weak to moderate patchy CD34 expression, but it's mostly negative. I'm trying to reload that one. Sorry, I hear my computer's uh, cooling fan whirring uh, madly and rapidly down under my desk trying to uh, keep the computer cool from the recording and all the digital slides. Oh, I guess this happens sometimes. All right, here's the keratin. It was, it was mostly negative, but there was some, some weak focal um, staining here and there. But I would say that this tumor can sometimes have strong keratin here, some kind of blushy keratin. But ugly epithelioid cells in, in the face of an old sun-damaged person and some keratin, you might be inclined to, to call this a carcinoma if you're having a bad day. But let's go back and look at more morphology. One thing that helps me is this color. This is this bluish purple, kind of purplish color or slate blue gray color or amphiphilic, whatever name you like for this color here. When you see that, it is always makes me think of this diagnosis. And if you're lucky on a big enough biopsy, if you look around, you're going to start to see the vascular channel formation with ugly hobnailed endothelial cells protruding into the lumen. You may see interconnected and astomosing channels in some places. But as you probably figured out, this is angiosarcoma, epithelioid angiosarcoma with many solid sheet-like areas and nested almost or nodular areas. Look at that nesting right there. Look at that. And I think that part of how this nesting occurs is that vascular lumens 
uh, malignant vascular channels get filled up because of multi-layering of the tumor cells layer on top of each other and eventually fill up the lumens and make these uh, filled up ves vessel spaces that actually are mimicking nests, okay? So I think that's important to remember that sometimes angiosarcomas can do that. And I've seen them mimic carcinoma, mimic melanoma. Sometimes it can be more spindled and mimic AFX um, or polymorphic dermal sarcoma. But here, it, if you looked around the slide enough, it should have been, uh, with practice, this is pretty easy to tell, oh yeah, this is an angiosarcoma. But I just want you to see uh, how scary it can be if you had a partial biopsy because you sometimes see no vascular channels whatsoever. So when I have a pleomorphic spindle cell tumor that I'm thinking of a sarcoma or a really ugly epithelioid tumor um, and I think of poorly differentiated carcinoma or some sort of epithelioid, a sarcoma with epithelioid features, I try to always include ERV or CD31 in my panel just to make sure I avoid missing an epithelioid angiosarcoma. And unfortunately, these are very aggressive tumors like most angiosarcomas are. And I think this, um, I think this slide right here, uh, the color is a little different because it was a uh, a recut that was stained a different day. I think got on put on a different stain or or the stain needed redone or something. But in any case, uh, you can see again there are vascular channels um, in here, but they're pretty focal, and you got to go look for them. All right. So let me show you the the vascular markers just so you believe me. Thank you for your patience while I load my slides here. So this one is a nice uh, crisp cytoplasmic to membranous stain, and it's also highlighting background histiocytes, so this must be CD31. And CD31 shows diffuse, strong expression in the tumor, and so does ERG. So I've never personally seen an angiosarcoma that was negative for ERG or negative for CD31. I'm sure if I do this long enough, eventually I'll, I'll encounter one. But I've seen multiple angiosarcomas that were negative for CD34. So the real lesson I want you to get from this case is, number one, solid, ugly epithelioid cells with nesting, with a kind of amphiphilic or blue-gray or purple cytoplasm. Think of epithelioid angiosarcoma hunt around for vascular channels. Sometimes they're very focal, sometimes they are absent if you don't get a big enough biopsy. Usually if you have a big biopsy or complete excision, you will find some vascular channel. Look at those hobnailed cells. And remember, hobnailing can be seen in angiosarcoma, hobnail hemangioma, rediform angioendothelioma, and others. So hobnailing by itself does not mean malignancy, but ugly atypical hobnailed cells that are starting to pile up and multi, this is some multi-layering right here, look. You should usually have one endothelial cell layer in a normal vessel. But here, look at this. They're piling up and filling the lumen right here. And that's how, if that keeps growing, that's how we get those nodules that look like nests when that fills up the lumen. Really good example there to see that happening in action. And also look what's happening here. Background dermis, probably normal vessels here, they're getting completely wrapped by malignant endothelial cells. That's the way angiosarcomas grow. They it, divide the dermal collagen and wrap around it. They wrap around it nexal structures and, and uh, eccrine ducts. They really infiltrative and anastomotic channels. Good example. But um, uh, just remember that CD34 is often negative, or it may, may be negative, particularly in epithelioid angiosarcomas. I've also seen it in, in conventional angiosarcoma that had no epithelioid component, dead negative for CD34. So I do not like to use CD34 as a screening marker for vascular tumors because of cases like this one. Even though there is some patchy staining here, I've seen several others that were completely dead negative. And if you use CD34 alone to rule out vascular, you're going to miss the diagnosis there and you're going to call it AFX or something else and, and not recognize that it's an angiosarcoma. And these are, you know, pretty aggressive. They have some unique clinical and treatment considerations. Um, and it's really important to recognize angiosarcoma. Good example.